In this video, we're going to configure an extended IP access list to deny a particular host on one network from being able to telnet into a server that's located on another network. And we do that by configuring the extended IP access list to just deny telnet because we don't want to deny him the ability to use other applications or other services that are running on the server, just not allow him to telnet. So again, we have to be inside the global configuration mode. And again, we're going to use context sensitive help. And let's get going by typing in access dash list space question mark. That brings up all the different access lists that I can configure on this router. I want IP extended access list. Got to use a number between 100 and 199 to identify this list to the router as being extended. Type in 110 for 110 space question mark. Now, we either have to deny or permit for the most part. Now, I want to deny this individual the ability to tell it. So let's type in deny, question mark. Got to deny him something. And it's, it's on this list here. And it's actually going to be TCP because that's the protocol that works with Telnet up at the upper four layers of the OSI model. And that's the only protocol that's listed currently on this list that works with Telnet. OK, so I know it's going to be TCP. Question mark. Now it wants either a IP address, the, the any command, or a host for a single source host. We're working with a single source host. Let's type in host space question mark. Now it wants the IP address of this single source host that we're going to deny the ability to use TCP with Telnet. All right, work with me here. So now I type in 192.168.30.1 space question mark. Now it wants the host of the destination that we're going to deny this individual the ability to tell that into. Again, I have to type in the host command. Again, question mark. Give it the IP address of the destination you're going to deny it access to through Telnet. Great. 192.168.20.1 space question mark. Now, I have to say that I'm going to deny it the ability to use TCP with Telnet, but to identify this as being a particular port or a protocol, I got to find the right command here. Now, we're working with a port 23 in this case, so it's match only packets on a given port number, which is port 23. Let's type in EQ space question mark. Now, again, I have to find the right protocol. Look at all the different protocols we have to work with here. I can stop him from using FTP, Gopher, host name, uh, IRC, but I want Telnet. I can also see that I have a port number with it, port 23. You have an option at this point. You can either type in Telnet or 23 for the port that Telnet uses. Let's type in Telnet, space, question mark. Now I can continue on by typing in some other denials for access to different ports, or let's say I want to use the log command. Um, the log command sends a message up to the interface or the console, letting me know that uh, this individual who's located at 192.168.30.1 just tried to tell net into that server. So I can type in log, and now I can hit enter. I'm all done. Now, I'm all done denying him the ability to Telnet, but if I don't say something about permitting him to have access to those other applications, there's an implicit deny at the end of that access list that says that if you don't tell me otherwise, he doesn't get nothing. All right? That's what we're saying here. So I'm going to have to do a permit also. So we're going to, again, make another entry into access list 110 that says that not only him, but anybody who comes into this interface would also have access to that server that's located on the remote network and they'll be able to use any protocol, any application other than what we've uh, stated up here in the first entry of access list 110. So we do this by typing in access dash list space 110. All right. Now type in a question mark. We want to do a permit space question mark. Again, we want to select and tell it what it has access to. Well, in this case, it would be IP. You see where it says IP there and it says any internet protocol? So type in IP space question mark. 
and now you have an option. You can either type in the source address, and what you're saying here that the only person who will have any business going into that server is going to be the individual with that address there, or the any, which says that anybody can have access to the server with the exception of 192.168.30.1 to Telnet. You follow me here? Okay. So, at this point, I'm going to type in any. That says anybody other than 192.168.30.1, the host, can Telnet. And we're going to give another any, which says that it can use any IP protocol. So, we set, we set it up with the access list to deny the host 192.168.30.1 the ability to Telnet. But since he's also part of this permit statement inside of the access list 110, he'll be able to do anything other than Telnet along with everybody else. Now I hit enter here and it brings us back to the prompt. Now at this point I'm all done. The only thing I've got to do is apply this access list to an interface. We want to use Ethernet 0. INT E space 0 and watch my prompt change let me know that I'm in the interface mode. Now I have to type in IP access and now we always use the group command to apply a access list to an interface. Alright so I'll type in group 10110 which is 110 and I'm going to say that this is to filter incoming traffic into the interface that allows traffic into that network where that server is located. So it's going to be an in command. All right. At this point, just hit enter, and we're all done. So that's all there is to it. And you see the granularity that I get with an extended IP access list, and that's what we were looking for here. Now, there are a lot of basic options that we worked with here, but there's a lot more of extended options that you can use for filtering. So you're going to have to work with the different options. And remember, there's more than one way to configure an access list for filtering action.